Hi, everyone. Megan here from Romance by the Book with the lovely Marielle. Hello. And this is our last week for May's Book of the Month, Bride by Allie Hazelwood. And yeah. things are heating up in here. <laughs> and, but there's a lot going on because we've got the whole like marriage of convenience romance story happening. But also there is a missing best friend and we have not forgotten about her. No, definitely not. Um, so we pick up with Misery waking up um, for the second time after her big five day long trance and she is desperately needing to feed. Um, so she kind of stumbles down the stairs and she finds um, Lo and Alex um, on the computer and Alex jumps up to hug her and she's horrified. <laughs> and he thanks her for saving Anna. And she's like, you know, I didn't like take poison on purpose to save Anna, right? And he's like, but you would have, you know, you would have protected her anyway. And she's like, I mean, maybe. <laughs> so <laughs> you know she would point, have. Up until this point, Alex has been like very jumpy around yeah. misery. And like, she scared. has been like loving it yeah um like she's enjoying <laughs> it a little like i don't know like a little too much but no she like relishes yeah. being able to just like freak him out it's really and funny. all of a sudden he is like not scared of her at no he loves her it's funny he did smell like low on her mm. before mm. this happened and he was and she kept like cutting him off so he could never quite like say the like, thought that he it. was having yeah. But he was sorry. very like, wait a minute, something's different. Something's different. Also, yeah. Why do you smell like? So I'm not sure if that's what did it, or yeah. if it's like her near death experience that. But like he, she keeps trying to say things that freak him out. Like would have freaked him out before, and it's he not now working. is just like, <laughs> yeah. it's fine. He's like, damn it, it's funny. Um. So Alex found the person that Serena had interviewed. Um. Though he doesn't know that this person is likely Anna's father, um, but he did find what they were looking for, basically. Um, and so uh, her and Lo discuss it, and unfortunately, they can't talk to this man because he is dead. He yeah. has been dead yeah. since about two weeks after Serena disappeared, so for several months now. Um, it was a car accident, and uh, he was appointed to his most recent position by the former governor, Davenport. And so Lo got them a dinner invite to the governor's house that night mm -hmm. so they can kind of see what's up. Um, it's like, it's like not suspicious, but also kind of circumstantially suspicious. Yeah, so for sure. So they're trying to figure out what exactly is going on there. Yeah. Um, and so she's about to drink from a blood bag and he says he wants her to use him instead. And she's like, I mean, I, she kind of tells him what Owen, her brother, told her. Um, about them forming an attachment and he's like too late basically <laughs> he's, like, he's like we're not forming an attachment like we haven't already formed an attachment and she's like i mean yeah okay i get that um but she's like i should stay away from your neck and he's like i mean if you say so so she bites his wrist this time and uh he's just kind of like i mean if i bite you in the neck people are gonna right you're see. gonna notice and, and he's just like like i don't care <laughs> um but yeah so she bites his wrist this time and he takes her up to his room and she's feeding more and they're like messing around and they talk about contraception and he says they can't have like penetrative sex um they're a different species it might not work um because specifically of what she does to him um which yeah. is different this is than thing before that has not been a problem before like apparently he has had relationships when he was Living in Berlin, like apparently humans and um and other species, like it was humans, vampires, wares were all kind of living amongst each like other in college there. together. Um, yeah, and so there were. She was like, "So you dated and humans?" Had, and he's like, "Yeah." Then she's like, "It wasn't a problem." Them? Then <laughs> he's like, "No," <laughs> but somehow with her, um, it be, and she, he's like he's he's very like if you bet it at first and then he's like well i'll show you and she's like okay so they like you know they're messing around they get each other off and he shows her that he has a knot um and she you know of course has never seen one before doesn't really know what to make of it but does realize that it could be a potential issue if her body you know is not made to take that basically um 
So yeah, that's kind of left open-ended for the moment. Um, so they go pick out a gift for the this excuse they have to go to the governor's house that they've gotten him this gift for coming to their wedding or setting up their, I forget what it's supposedly this for. This is like competitive gift purchasing. Yeah. They're having <laughs> just the hardest time agreeing and on And then something. finally he's like, do you even like this guy? And she's like, no. Mm-hmm. And he's like, then bu- fuck this. Like, let's just grab the first thing we see. Like, who cares, right? As long as it's expensive, like, it doesn't matter. Um, And so it's it's funny. Uh, And so at the dinner at his house, the governor is like asking all these invasive questions and he's drinking too much, which is typical, obviously. Um, And the subject turns to Lowe's mom and her dealings with Thomas Jalakis, who is who they have figured out is on his dad. Um, And the governor is like, oh, yeah, he died. Um, But yeah, boy, he got around basically like, oh, I bet your mom did like him. Like he got around kind of a thing. And Lowe is like not having that. So he grabs him up and slams him against the wall and is like why did you have him killed like really pressing him and finally he says like i didn't want to but he was talking to journalists about some embezzlement that my administration was involved in and so we had to is what he says we had to um security like is very like freaked out by them but also like it's clear that it becomes kind of clear that he's like not fully with it yeah so yeah and so security busts in they're like guns blazing and low is like lets him go and grabs her and they leave um and so in the car low uh kind of posits a situation that serena could have found out about on a a different way and like blackmailed thomas to get this financial story that she was working on like kind of a quid pro quo thing um, and now she doesn't want to be found because he's dead and it's like a whole thing or whatever. And misery so, like, I, cannot accept that. Yeah. And it's a lot, it has a lot to do with like her feeling like I don't, Serena would not do yeah. that. She wouldn't put a child. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And she says, she's like, first of all, she wouldn't leave without telling me. Like she has left before and done stuff, but like she would never leave without telling me. Number two, she would never put a kid at risk for a story. Like that's yeah. just not a thing that she would ever do. And, uh, and so he's like, he kind of lets it go for the moment, but clearly he's not as as convinced of all this as she is. Yeah. Um, and so they go to meet her brother. And love is kind of like, I mean, but you didn't, I mean, you didn't think she would leave without, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. which like you have found out things that you, you didn't think she would that keep information think. from you. And right. here we are with information. Well, and in her it. head, she's like, some of what he's saying is makes sense, but I don't care. Like, I don't believe it. And I'm not going to, like, I'm going to find her. It um, feels like the, the kind of thing that like, when you know somebody, like you couldn't explain why it's different, but. But you know, it, it is. Yeah. yeah. So they go to meet her brother. Um, and, uh, when they all get out of the car, the wear collateral is there as well with her brother, who she still is under the impression is Lowe's mate. She's worried about this and then confused by their meeting because, like, they certainly don't act like mates. It's all very, like, for- for- formal in a way. Like, they don't touch. There's no, like, nothing, you know? And yeah. uh, Owen and, he, and it her, is kind of like, oh, good to see you. Good to see you. you I'm fine. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and so Owen tells her that he's about to stage a coup for their father's council seat. And she is horrified, thinking that he's going to end up dead. Yeah. Um, and he's very nonchalant about it, as he likes to do. He's horrified, but also, like, kind of shocked because the, he is the, like, golden child she, right. she was like i thought you guys were good we're like good yeah um it's and so she so asked well so she asks him she's like oh you're gonna enact this plan you came up with two days ago kind of a thing you know and he's like no i made this plan three months ago ever since i found out that dad was sending you into enemy territory again like uh he basically switches into their language and he says like i couldn't do anything when i was a child and when you came back at 18 i wasn't brave enough to do anything but like i can do something now and i'm gonna and yeah. she's so shocked. literally this plan was kind of on the back in the back of his head from like when she was eight years old <laughs> like yeah. it would spin a thing that he has been not yeah. okay with their dad all that time which is really interesting because she had no she never knows what to make of thing. him and how he acts um and so he kind of tells them about his plans um and then they go to separate 
And there's no hug or anything between Gabby and Lo. And so Misery is like more confused than ever about that. And uh, and then she's like, if he does have a mate, it's clearly not that woman. Like that woman is not his mate. Like that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and so as they're driving, she's trying to figure things out. She knows she's missing something, but like, it's just not quite there. Like she can't grasp it. Um, and then she realizes that they're close to her old apartment. Um, and so, which st- still technically is hers. Cause like they basically took over her lease when she left to get married for a year or whatever. And so they decide to stop by. And, uh, Lo is struggling a bit because this place really smells like her, like layers and layers and layers of smells like her after years. And like, he's mm-hmm. like very, <laughs> very, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, she lived there for four years. So like her scent is everywhere. So she asks if he's close to Gabby and he's like, no, I don't know her very well. She volunteered to be the collateral. And so she's like, Gabby, isn't your mate. And he's like, he looks shocked. And he's like, no. "Mm -hmm." And then he's like, oh my God, no, I'm so sorry. Like he realizes how awkward she must have felt in that meeting. And like, he feels terrible. And he's like, no, like it's one of these things where the collateral has always been super important to like a person in charge. And the only person I have left in my family is Anna. And I certainly wasn't sending her. And so when Gabby volunteered, we came up with this plot of saying that she was my mate because we convinced them that that was equally like as important as blood family member or whatever. Um, But he never meant for anybody to know about it, basically, and especially not her. Um, And so he feels bad. Um, And so she kisses him. She just like kisses him and they start messing around and she wants to have sex, but he's like, I don't want to hurt you. And eventually he can't resist. Um, and so they do have yeah. sex, but he pulls out before he cannot. And and she's, you know, she's blissed out, but also things are wheels are turning in her head. And she says, Do where's always not? And he says, No, it's complicated. And she says, Explain it to me. And he's like, only between certain people. And she's basically she's like, finally like, works it out that while talking are. to him, she's like, It's me, isn't it? I'm your mate. And he, and she's like, I feel the same way. Like this, it doesn't have to be this way, basically. And he just goes blank faced and says to her, I'm sorry if I've ever given you the wrong impression about what is happening between us. And she's like, no, I know I'm right. And um, he says, you should stop using where words that you cannot understand. And he says, I can see how it would be appealing to you since you struggle with belonging. Mm -hmm. You motherfucker. That's what I wrote in my notes. I was like, how dare you say that to her, you piece of shit. So she is, of course, heartbroken and can't believe what he is saying. And then he gets a call that's clearly very important. And he's like, I need to leave. I'm going to send someone to pick you up. But we probably shouldn't be around each other anymore. Like, clearly, this is not you're getting the wrong idea or whatever. I... And she's like, great, sure, bye. And he leaves and she goes to get in the shower. And she never imagined that she could feel like this. She has a hard time with feelings. She doesn't get attached to people. Serena's the only person in her life that she's ever really been truly attached to. And now she's attached to him and he's acting like she's wrong. Like this is not a thing. And she doesn't- And even know. now she's like- She's like, he's why, yeah, but why also, is why? also yeah. like, she can't be right if he's willing to do well. And that's this. the thing, then she's like, she's trying to convince herself that she is wrong because she, he's like, you don't understand where things, and she's like, he's right, I don't, but like, how can I be wrong? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And so, um, Mick arrives to pick her up, um, and in the car, she's looking out the window, and Mick injects her with something, and he says, I'm sorry, misery. And she is out. And the thing that's the most terrible about this is that Mick is like the one person who, from the beginning, she was like, I mean, he's a good actor. He's like, nice he's to me. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't hate my guts on sight. Here, he's nice to me. Yeah. She also had like clocked that he had, you know, like something, something in the way that his heartbeat was, mm-hmm. you know, and she, and they, she decided that maybe it was grief when she found out that, you know, he had lost, he had lost his mate and son. And, and you find out kind of later, that's the same thing. Lo always thought like Lo knew something didn't smell right, but he just thought he was like, had been ruined by grief basically. And everything was like wrong after that. And I'm sure that was some of it, but that was clearly not all of it. Um, So she is brutally shaken awake by Serena 
And in her head, you know, she's basically asleep still. And she's thinking like the only person who's ever done such a horrible thing to me is Serena, like shaking me awake in the dead of sleep. Because it's the daytime. And, like, oh my and, God, she... Serena. and then she wakes up. <laughs> And so she's been in this attic room the entire time she's been gone three months, three months plus no idea where they are. She knows she's in a, at least a four story building just based on the way the pipes sound, but like, there's no windows. There's nothing. She has no idea where she is. Um, the guards never come inside her room and she's never left her room. Um, they have so like a slit that they send stuff through she right, like has- and everything. And they just, they hug and it's all very sweet. And Serena is, um, is like shocked to see her there. And, she also uh, is kind of like, I've had a lot of time to think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she also doesn't love the way that, you know, that last time they fought right. that she left things and she was worried that misery might have like kind of given up on her. Yeah. And misery is like, no, ma'am, yeah, that's not, a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's not a thing. Yeah. So they talk about Lo and Anna and Serena is even more shook that Misery is married. It's she's like, it's only, I know it's three months, which seems like a long time to be gone, but also it's only been three months. How are you married? <laughs> like, <laughs> and, uh, and so they talk about all that. And then a guard comes with a blood bag for Misery. And Serena says that the meds made Misery sick. And so Misery goes over to the wind, over to the window that he's opened to try to thrall him. But she, her power is weak compared to her dad. She needs to be able to touch him and she can't touch him. So he's, it starts to work, but then he's able to pull out of it. And then he realizes what she was doing and he gets pissed and he reaches in to like grab her and Serena grabs his arm and like starts breaking his fingers until he opens the door and then they lock him inside the door. So they it's like, he's been there three months and has never had an opportunity. And the, like, as soon as the opportunity came, like she was not wasting a boy. She was ready to go. Yeah. Um, clearly and, she has considered how she was going to do it. Right. That. All the different options are of how she was going to get out. So um, they go out through another door and they realize they're in the nest, which is where the vampire grew up. territory. Oh shit. Definitely they're like, something is center. very wrong here. Like what is going on? So they start heading down some stairs and Vanya her dad's right hand woman. So Vanya her. from the beginning who came and got her from work. her work. Yeah. And so they she takes them um to Misery's father, who is clearly in this up to his neck. And Mick is there too, of course. Clearly he has been shading blame onto Emery this whole time for everything when a lot of the shit that happened was stuff that he did, including the poisoning. Um he And it was and it he was not trying to he it was well and of course so yeah that comes up at at later when her dad's talking but basically he says he did it because misery's dad has his son he thought his wife and son had died turns out just his wife died his son was like taken by the vampires and once they figured out that they had somebody important they knew they had leverage to try to get into the inner circle which they were able to do um so her father like berates her and says like you know you could never be a leader i'm so glad i picked your brother as my heir blah 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 and then he um tells her why he kidnapped Serena because he found out 20 years ago about a half where half human child who presented fully human and didn't know about her heritage. And he decided to monitor the situation in case anything came of it and how better to monitor her than to send her to live with his daughter in human territory. It's Serena. She didn't know as a kid, but lately she had been having issues and that's when this whole things started when she ended up meeting with Thomas Jalakis. So yeah, she had gone to like, try to get some blood work, try to figure out what was going on, try to. And, and so, and she had been, <clears throat> yeah, she'd been having, she'd been having yeah, things, she'd been having like, issues weird that things were weird. happening that she wasn't sure. And so um, she was digging her nose in places and people noticed, including her dad. And, uh, she he found out even more about it on the first day that serena was there because he thralled her and she told him everything and of course she's horrified because she doesn't remember that which he made sure she wouldn't remember yeah Um, and we find out like through this conversation um we knew that he was good at thralling yeah people um but also that like people would not even remember that he did it and and he told them all their secrets and they don't even know it yeah and that he would like he could implant you know, like at thoughts and ideas. ideas, things that they should do. Mm-hmm. Um, so all the stuff with that former governor, it's like, obviously that had been going on. Yeah. And so he could keep his 
hands clean because he's mm-hmm. over there getting the governor to both get information for him but also do things yeah like setting um, up the car accident that killed that guy yeah um so when and he said we he doesn't and he doesn't um and the guy didn't even remember right that that was yeah. a thing which when we like honestly when i read this part i was like that new governor brilliant a so smart never because be in a room she with refused him ever. to ever meet with him yeah, yeah. Um, and so he's like, you know, Serena can't shift, but um, even still, she and Anna are symbols of unity between the two other species. And like, I can't have that, basically. Um, and so Serena asks why he hasn't killed her yet. And she's um, and he's like, well, you're still a hybrid and you're more used to me alive. Like, we still don't know how this happened or like what you know, what it means or anything. Right. And so Misery asks him why he tried to poison Anna then if he wanted to keep them alive. And he says. Oh, misery. You think it was her I was trying to kill? Ouchie. <laughs> like, Great he's dad. straight up trying to kill her. Um, And so a knock happens on the door. It and- did make me think that it was Mick who, like, because it was Mick who had said, like, oh, no, you don't have to send it um, on a way. And it's like, yeah. Because he knew oh. nobody was after her. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Um, So a knock happens on the door and in walks her brother Owen with a handcuffed low. Uh-oh. So her father opines never being able to thrall low and how much it pissed him off and how he hasn't been able to find Anna because she's hidden away and nobody knows where she is. But now he finally has leverage over low. He has Lowe's mate and misery is like, ha, no, you don't like, I'm not his mate. And then she looks at low and she's like, tell him, you know, and low is like, what you silent. just told me the other day. Lo is silent with a sad smile. And now she's really like WTF is going on. And so. And um, I am like, you jerk. <laughs> yeah. So Lo is, is uh, he, t- uh, her dad tells Lo to arrange to have hand Anna over to him. And he's like, why would I do that? And her dad's like, oh, your mate will ask you to. And he says, you know her very little if you think that basically, like she would never ask me to do that. Um, and so dad has a knife to like immediately after that, dad has a knife to misery's throat. And, um, he says to her, like, I will sacrifice you for the good of the vampires. And she's like, oh, I know you've already done it twice now. Like big fucking surprise. You know, this is not a new thing that you're willing to. Yeah. And then she says to him, what a fucking coward you are. You love to sacrifice others for the good of the vampires, but never anything that you have to actually give up. Like you suck, you know? um and in, uh, the middle, and she, in the midst of this there is like a little eye contact situation happening so when he says that like serena can't shift serena's like yeah and, there's a thing happening where uh-huh, there's something happening uh, and serena pipes up in their secret language which is the same thing she wrote in when she found the note with um with anna's name and she says he's wrong about whether i can shift and um so misery is like oh shit okay so she says um i guess you'll have to kill me uh because i'm never gonna ask Lo to bring his sister here so let me have the last few words with my mate basically and then he she says to Lo, tell anna not to worry about that thing she can't do she'll grow into it like maybe when she's 25 or so and he it like pings for him what she's talking about and he looks over at Serena, who nods, and he says, now. And Owen opens up his handcuffs, and he shifts, and Serena shifts, and they just start tearing people apart. <laughs> and it is I great. I mean, <laughs> I feel like Owen and uh, Misery help. <laughs> yes. But there are some pretty, like, high-level vampiric, like, you know, yes. people in there. And they, yeah. it's, and the, the way it's described is that it's kind of like a massacre. Like, there's just... Yeah everywhere um so later gabby is like tending to this cut that she has on her neck from where her dad was holding her and a bunch of wares are like laughing about how freaked out she still is about the wares clothes tearing off when they shipped (laughs) and they're like where did you think happened to them and she's like i didn't think about it i just didn't expect to see a pink shirt like hanging from serena's wolf neck it was weird (laughs) And it's it's a very like lighthearted moment after everything that just happened. Yeah. Also um, relatable. Like yes, I yeah, think very, that would strike me as kind of funny and kind of weird. Very relatable. Um, and so her brother arrives and says he needs her. And so as they're walking, he's like, "You thought I betrayed you, didn't you?" 
like I saw your face when I walked in with Lo and she's like I mean yeah my husband was shackled and you walked in with him like I you know I'm Didn't sorry know. <laughs> like I'm, yeah. and uh and he's like I would never like I would never this whole thing was Lo's plan like you know to come in with me and be you like shackled or whatever so she's glad obviously that that yeah. all worked well, out like the call that Lo got when they were together was her brother like we need to we need to show you something yep and so it's it was a whole like we don't get to see it obviously because we're right. not in that point of view in this in but the they story. finally got the footage from the other building and she and he saw mick and of course they didn't know who it was but as soon as lo saw it he knew who it was and, and he, he knew that he had just like out. put serene uh put misery in his hands so yeah. Um, so they arrive where they're walking to and her father is shackled to a chair and blindfolded and has like headphones on. Um, cause they don't want him to thrall anybody, obviously. Um, so then they get him all undone. They talk to him. He says he would do it all again, et cetera. It's very, you know, like typical. Mm -hmm. Owen tells him that he is going to dismantle everything he's ever done like with relish basically and it's very satisfying like monologue that owen gives yeah i mean owen is like great in this moment too because he definitely is it's like you can see that like the whole time he knew how to play the game and he was the golden he was the golden child so like the dad def was willing to like take him at his word Right. But he, it's been a long time. Like, clearly, there's a lot of things he disagrees with. There's a lot of, like, stuff that his dad pulled that he was like, mm. This is not right. And, yeah. so and he's going to him, relish fixing it and uh, making sure that none of it lingers and that his legacy is nothing, basically. Yeah, well, and so, like, his dad chose him to be the successor because he was obviously stronger. And obviously, like, you know, his legacy would be safe with him. And here is... Here he is saying, like, actually, actually, no, I'm the exact wrong one for that. Yes. Job. Yeah. So they put all his stuff back on and then Lo says, what do you want to do with him? And she says, I don't care. I'll leave it to you too. And unless the need arises, feel free to never tell me about it. Like, I don't want to know if he's dead or alive. I don't want to know where he is or what he's doing. Like, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. Um. So She's misery... basically like, I don't want to think about him. Ever no, again. Never again. Yeah. So Misery sleeps in her childhood bedroom, which is like bizarre for her. She hasn't been there since she, was she like first eight. tried to come back yeah. um, after being collateral. Um, and she wakes up to Serena in bed with her. And uh, and she's like, why didn't you tell me that this was all happening to you? Like, what the hell? You know, and Serena's like, I was unsure at first what was even happening. Like, I thought I was losing my mind. And then I thought you hated wares like you. And she's like, and she's like, I don't. And she's like, I mean, you made jokes about him all the time, like comparing him to dogs and stuff. And like, I don't know. It was weird. And so. Um, I know she's like, they were jokes, but, but I really kind of liked this because this is a thing that I think, you know, literature can do mm -hmm. where it's like a, a one-off line that's not, but it makes an excellent point, right? That like she's like it was jokes I didn't mean it well how's anyone supposed to know that you don't mean it and also like now that you think of it is it not hurtful to is the people hurtful? who right. might be exactly. around you so yeah, yeah. She's and so things, kind of rethink yeah absolutely and things were a mess um and because she thought she might die like she didn't know what was going on with her that's when she started freaking out about misery not having anybody or anything that she cared about because she didn't want to leave her alone yeah. Um, and she didn't know, you know, until she like figured out what was going on with her, yeah. she didn't know um, what would come of, you know, like yeah. what, what was going to happen with her friend. Um, um, and so, of course, they hug and they agree they're all free to be who they are and there's nothing but love between them. And like, that's how it's always going to be. And they never need to worry about keeping secrets or anything again. Um, misery. Well, she's first she says, like, she doesn't see low for three days. And then she's like, well, I do, but like as where alpha low, not like Milo, you know? Um, and so Serena wants to spend some time with the wares to try to figure her, herself out. And she asks, um, and so uh, misery wants to try to like make that happen for her. 
So she goes to ask Owen where Lo is. And he's like, oh, probably at home. Like the negotiations we were doing are over. Like, I don't know when he'll be back here. If, if ever. If kind he's of ever coming back, yeah. Um, and so she's like, oh. And then she's like, well, what do I do? And so she decides she's going to do what she wants. So she takes her brother's keys and she drives the car across into the Ware territory. And she takes Serena and drops her off at Juno's house. And they go off running into the woods. So it is kind of interesting there, too, because she, um, like, Owen kind of tells her, like, you are free to stay here if you want to. You're also free to go back if you want to, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I don't, you're, I'm fine with whatever you choose. Yeah. Um, But Misery isn't sure, like, if she's welcome back or what's going on. But she does think that, like, Serena needs to go. So, but when she goes to, like the borderland or whatever the the security cross point she mm-hmm. like identifies herself and they're like come on in and, and so she's like yeah. okay she's like oh okay but it's all but very it, like yes. tentative it's, it's very because ambiguous. we don't know what's going on um and so she goes to lowe's house and she goes up to her room and all of her stuff is in boxes it all seems very empty too and she is like stunned that all her stuff is in boxes and then Lo shows up and they chat a little bit about Serena and Anna meeting and about how he was able to prove Emery's involvement in with the loyals, um, which were like Roscoe's other seconds and stuff like that. They were like pulling stuff like I think they blew up a school and some other stuff. And so he yep. she didn't have anything to do they with done some the whole Anna thing, they but they had them. done bad things and he was able to finally prove that um, because of what they did when they were there, like putting that stuff on her computer Um, And so he had just been dealing with all that and he can tell she wants to say something like, and he says, you can be honest with me about what you're thinking, misery. And she says, why would I though? So you can use my deepest wounds against me again. You lied. Like, why did you lie? And like, am I your mate? You should, and, and he says to her again, you shouldn't use where words that you don't understand. And she's like, okay. And then she goes like, she's going to leave. And he grabs her and he says, my feelings are mine, not yours to deal with. I don't want you to feel stuck with me because otherwise I'll be miserable knowing that you feel like you don't have a choice. Um, and I can survive without you, but only if I'm without you, like away from you, you know, and it would be better than letting you like bind yourself to me when you don't, like, when, if, if you don't feel the same, you know? And uh Which and she's what a dummy because they already were and and this whole conversation is feeling like he was packing her up, maybe. But yeah. then she but then he's like, Oh no, I'm just changing the windows. Right. Like I saw what you had at the nest, and like your brother told me how to do it, and so we're doing it. And so she's like, Okay, so that makes implies that he wants her to stay. And then she says, What about my love for you? Like, can that bind me to you? Like, is that okay with you, sir? Kind of a thing, you know? And then she's like, if I want to be in love with my stupid wear husband, I'm going to be in love with my stupid wear husband. <laughs> I live and here. He kind of is a dummy at this big. point because she had told him what her feelings were and he's still acting like they're yeah. strangers. It was very sad. Yeah. And, and she's like, I live here. I like Anna. She likes me. My best friend is one of you now. Like... I'm, I live here. You know what I mean? And he's like, so he interrupts her. Um, yeah. About the changing windows and stuff, which was funny. And then, um, he says, I'm terrified. If I don't let you go now, I won't be able to. And so she kisses him and tells him to shut up. (laughs) And she's like, maybe I don't have the hardware, but the software is here and I get to program it. Like I will figure this out. Yeah. Um, and so they start kissing. Also, it's not like she's trying to go anywhere. It's very yeah. So she's she's like, stop it, shut up. Yeah, we're this is done. We're done talking. And so they're like making out. And so of course he finally, you know, is like, my mate, like you're here. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Like, and um, and so he's like, you know, talking all these sweet things to her and like kissing her. And she's like, oh my god, I love this. I love you. And, uh, and he's like, wait, like I'm too wound up. Like we got to stop. And she's like, no, we're not going to stop. I'm going to feed from you again. And we're going to have sex and you will not like, this is all going to be fine. Like, trust me. Right. Yeah, the whole thing. It's yeah. going to be great. Like, and everything if it's not, is fine. Then we'll and, talk and, about and, it after. Yeah. If it's not fine, then we can figure it out, but we're not going to worry about it until then basically. 
Um, and so this is not a this is not a way of reasoning that I understand, honestly. I like to worry before the problem happens. <laughs> <laughs> However, well, it makes and, sense. and then he's like, Are you sure? Like he's questioning her, and she's like, No, I want you to do it. And he's like, The idea, she's like, The idea is, and he's like, Weird. And she's like, No, I was gonna say hot. And then he's like, and then it's on. <laughs> like it is on after that. And it is, it is hot. Um, and uh truly a delight. Like the whole scene was great. Um, yeah. and so they're and everything lo- works great. Like there's nothing. Not and so they're locked together and it's very romantic. Romantic as hell is what I wrote in my notes. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Um, and so she wakes up later and he's just kind of like looking at her and like touching her. It's very sweet. And he says, um, a lot is going on inside him right now. And like, he won't be able to let her out of his sight for a while and uh and he also doesn't even want her to like shower him off basically and she's like how about you just come with me and then you can just like put it back on (laughs) he's like okay okay they go to take a shower and uh and she's like you should bite me now because like i'm like we're this is done like we're here and he's like no um there's some like ceremonial aspects to it that are really important to me and like we'll get there but like not right now um and then he tells her where he'll bite her, though, like on her back, like right under her neck, like the for where he was scenting her, like in the in that scene, basically. And uh, and he describes like what what he'll do and stuff. And it's like it's getting her all worked up. And then they have sex in the shower and she like feeds from him. And it's all awesome. Um and then we get an epilogue, which is finally from Lowe's point of view. We have gotten those few little snippets at the beginnings of the chapters, which were clearly from his point of view, which I think um, for as small as they were kind of informed a lot um, mm-hmm. when you're reading. So that was nice. But having this little bit from him was fun, too. Um, he is still incredibly uh like in awe that he gets to like keep her and everything is like good and he like doesn't really know what to do with himself um but they're fixing up on his old room again she's gonna move back into her room because obviously misery is moving in with him and uh anna finally gets back home it's been like two like more than two weeks since she's been gone yeah owen is where she was she was with cohen in his territory so he brings her back and lo goes to tell him about everything that occurred um and cohen suddenly stops dead and looks at Serena, who's also there, and is just like in awe looking at her. And he... Mo is like, oh no. <laughs> That's inconvenient. We just in case you forgot, because from the last bit, Cohen, it, he is a uh, part of the Northern Pack. Mm-hmm. They traditionally, their alpha takes a vow of celibacy. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. But in, if you find your fated mate, it's a different story. <laughs> so Maybe. hopefully. <laughs> I looked at Allie Hazelwood's website like real quick <laughs> when I finished there. I yeah. didn't see anything. However, no. And from what anyone, I've heard, if like anyone here knows Allie Hazelwood or has yeah. an in the inside track, please. Yeah. From what <laughs> I had heard, it's not currently on her schedule, which means it's not going to be like next year or anything. But hopefully, with how well this book was received it is going to happen. So I will look forward to that. But yeah, so that's the end. And uh, it was great. I really enjoyed this book a lot. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, it so- was, I, th- I think I had told you that I thought it was a very like, like a different and kind of a stylized take on the paranormal that I, I super enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. So yay. Yep. It was really fun. We hope you guys enjoyed it too. And uh, next week, we will be chatting with the delightful Angelina Lopez, who's going to come talk to us about Bride. And uh, we're thrilled to talk to her. So we'll see you next week. See you then. Bye.